Be Not Afraid is underwritten by Associated Ophthalmologists. Now, hear the good news and be not afraid. Good morning. Welcome to Iowa Catholic Radio, Be Not Afraid. We have a special guest this morning, Monsignor Vicente. Good, good morning, morning, Father Fabian. Good to have you here. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and in the Son, and in the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, of mighty giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. In the Father, and in the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Monsignor Larry Beeson, for how That's long right. you had been a priest? <laughs> 61 years. <laughs> 61 years. And uh, it's, it's funny to hear 61 because supposedly a pomposous celebration last year. But about this pandemic and back and forth circumstances was impossible. But the last weekend was a remarkable celebration at the Basilica. I have to be Basilica. so thankful to Father Aquinas, the pastor of the Basilica, and his parishioners. They put on a celebration for me for the to celebrate the 60th, and it, it's actually 61st. But 61st. The, yeah. Great. And, uh, and today, my dear brothers and sisters, we have an, a tremendous testimony of good priests and a servant of God in a very deeply manner as a priest. And it's my pleasure to share with him these microphones today. Monsignor, could you please tell us about your biography? Yes. I was born and raised in Des Moines okay. uh, in Beaverdale, a little part of the town called okay. Beaverdale, in a parish called Holy Trinity Parish. Okay. And the pastor there was a, a very important person in our lives and uh, the, our parishioners, our, our pa my parents and uh, all of the parishioners. He began the parish, actually. and was uh, So there were lots of seminarians in, the, in, in that parish when I was growing up. So when I decided to go into the seminary, felt called by God, and, and uh, actually at a much earlier age, when I was in fifth grade, I knew that, well, I'm going to go on into the seminary, into the priesthood, and I had the example and the friendship of the various priests that were from Holy Trinity at that time. So I went into the seminary. My, my sister, who is a religious sister, went into the convent uh, two years. When she, after she graduated from high school, she went into the, the sisters. And as soon as I graduated from high school, then I went into the seminary at uh, Loras College in Dubuque. So for those uh, listeners, especially youth people, men and women, how the Lord called you to be a priest? You know, it was a very simple call. The fact that uh, I just uh, felt that God is inviting me into this uh, work of, of serving the church. A actually, it was kind of a funny thing. Uh, you used to have two masses on Sunday, one for the people who were going to communion, and then the, the later Mass was uh, for the people who, not everybody went to communion in those oh, days. Wow. So, okay. <laughs> so, so uh, and it took a long time to distribute communion, and my very first call was, I thought, well, I could help them distribute communion, and uh, so that was, that was the beginning of the call. And of course, our motives change over time, you know, it, it, that, that's the, that's, that was the call of a child, you know, called to a child. But uh, later on, then I realized, no, I can be of service to uh, other people, and uh, so I, I I followed that call. Monsignor, which seminary did you assist in for minor and major seminarian? You, you know, I I went to a, a Dowling High School and uh, took okay. four years of Latin when I was there. We wow. needed Latin in those days, and then I went up to Dubuque to Loris College, and again. Uh, majored in Latin because of the fact that again we needed Latin, and uh, so and then I went to a Dubuque seminary that's been closed for many years called Mount Saint Bernard Seminary, and it was taught by Dominican priests, and uh, so uh, I I went to into the part of the seminary that that was all in Latin, so that was that was my training for those years in formation. Any special devotion and a saint that inspired your uh, persistent road to be a priest? Well, you know, when already when I was in seventh grade, I began the practice of going to Mass daily. And uh, so uh, all through high school and college, uh, I, going to Mass daily was so important to me. And so 
the life in the seminary was kind of a continuation of that practice. Uh, the, the Mass has always meant a great deal to me. And daily Mass especially is, uh, uh, you know, if you have problems, if you're <laughs> challenges, uh, you bring those to the altar, and uh, Jesus is always present. And so I always had that, that, that uh, feeling. <laughs> At that time, was I required for a pastoral year before to be uh, ordained as a priest? You know, oh. no, that's, that's really interesting, the fact that you asked that question, because back then, everything was very theoretical, and uh, oh. we, we didn't, we, you know, we might visit nursing homes or uh, uh, sometimes the jail, things like that. Uh, but uh, we, we didn't really have a year. Nowadays, the seminaries have a, a pastoral year where they go into the parish. And uh, But I was always close to my parish in, in Des Moines and uh, followed uh, what was going on there, tried to help out in the various ways that I could. And uh, even in the summertime, uh, well, when we had vacation, I, I worked at Mercy Hospital Wow. Uh, not in any important uh, <laughs> position, but served Mass every day. And in those days, I always remember the religious sisters accompanied the priest to, to each room as he brought communion to the sick. It was a very um, up, uh, uplifting and inspiring way to, to serve. Iowa Catholic Radio, Be Not Afraid, with Monsignor Bison this morning. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and John Lee and Eddie in the Morning provided by Bell Construction. Bell Construction is a roofing company. They specialize in residential re-roofs, like commercial jobs, and have the experience to meet all of your roofing needs with personal service. With Bell Construction, the owner will come to your home or place of business in person to inspect and ensure the quality of work that you deserve. They pride themselves in working with you on a personal basis and making sure you are satisfied. Bell Construction, 515-963-4494. Bell Construction. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Catholic Women Now provided in part by Permar Security, providing security solutions for homes and businesses since 1953. Permar Security is a Catholic-owned family business supplying security systems, access control systems, video surveillance, fire alarm systems, and video doorbells. All alarm systems are monitored out of their monitoring center located in the state of Iowa. Permar Security, 515-244-5660, permarsecurity.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Dowling Catholic Sports is provided in part by Ashworth Vision Clinic. With two licensed optometrists, Barbara Sheets, a Dowling graduate, and Dr. Craig Harper, the Ashworth Vision Clinic team provides complete eye exams, contact lenses, glasses, glaucoma testing, and pre- and post-operative care. Ashworth Vision Clinic is located at 60th and Ashworth in West Des Moines. 515-440-4610 or online ashworthvision.com. Thank you, Dental Associates, for underwriting Dowling Catholic Sports 365. With over 40 years' experience, Dental Associates is a group dental practice with the mission of promoting optimum health and well-being to all patients, providing preventative, restorative, and cosmetic dentistry for the entire family. Message underwritten by Dr. Kenton Gleichman, Dr. Steve Carbaca, and Dr. Ben Nagel. Dental Associates, addressing your smile, needs, and dreams. Online at Des Moines-DentalAssociates.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and John Leonetti in the morning is provided by Five Sons Naturescapes. Five Sons Naturescapes is a Catholic veteran-owned family company providing premium outdoor landscaping, clean up and restore outdoor living space with retaining walls, privacy fencing, pergolas, paver sidewalks, and patios. Issues with soil settling and water around the foundation and yard? Five Sons Naturescapes can grade and install drainage tile to help. Five Sons Naturescapes online at fivesonsnaturescapes.com. Welcome back to Iowa Catholic Radio, Be Not Afraid, Monsignor Vincent, Father Fabian, and this morning. Father, uh, where, Monsignor, excuse me. Sorry, Monsignor. <laughs> where, oh, the pay is the same. <laughs> <laughs> where, where, where did you celebrate the first Mass in your ministry? My first Mass was celebrated at Holy Trinity Parish in Des Moines. There were two of us from the parish ordained the same year. Oh, uh, okay. We were very close friends and uh, Who was neighbors, it? Father Tom. Father Pan, Tom Pfeffer, over at Our Lady of the Americas, they call him Padre Tomas. Yeah, you know? right, yes, right. Yeah, and a remarkable and a memorable personality yeah, in yes, terms of the service yeah. to the uh, increasing Latino community. Uh, uh, yes, at that time. yes. And, you know, there's a, one of the saints has a, uh, a saying, the sign of God's presence that we are led where we do not intend to go. Wow. <laughs> and, and, 
And that kind of sums up my life. You know, I've always been full of surprises <laughs> because of the fact that in 1962, uh, my bishop, Bishop Daly, said, I want you to come with me to Rome. So oh, uh, wow. it was the, the Pope St. John Paul II, St. John the Twenty Third, that called the Second Vatican Council. And uh, we, we were on the way to the council then. And uh, so... How was uh, that, is, that experience for you? Once but it was really, again, it was one of those experiences I never experienced, <laughs> never thought I would ever experience. First of all, to go to Rome, you know, the, my biggest uh, excursion was to Bondurant, you know, when I was a <laughs> young person, but to, in the, to go clear to Rome, and which I did, uh, and then to be in the council. And I knew at the, I was very aware at the time, this is the most historic thing that you'll ever do in your whole life is to be present wow. for a Vatican council. For, and so, uh, and I worked in the council, and uh, my uh, job was to pass out ballots and the materials that the bishops were studying and notes that they would uh, carry from one to another and assist them in whatever way I could uh, in, a, in a very you know, minor role. There are people who were the experts at the council, and, and I heard many of them speak uh, because uh, in, the, in the evenings, a lot of times, they would have lectures that you could listen to. And, which I did, and uh, so it was a very and and during the day um, the, the council was conducted in the Latin language, and uh, I, I was, was right in amongst the, the bishops, and so if one of them was making a, a talk, they called it an intervention. I always stand close to him, thinking that maybe someday he will be the pope. Wow! wow. <laughs> but not, it was not to be. However. Uh, St. John Paul II was a bishop in the Second the Vatican Krakow Council. Yes, at that time. But I had the oldest bishops and the youngest archbishops. That was the section in the council that I had. And so uh, uh, St. John Paul II was a, a bishop. He would be a, <laughs> in a lower part of the basilica, actually, than the, than the, the ones I was serving. But uh, it was uh, very interesting every day to hear hear the talks, hear the interventions, and realize what was going on. In fact, until today, the Second Vatican Council is still working in our church. At that time, how was the environment for the church? Was it a very tra I'm transitional, but at the same time was crucial moment for the church? It know? was absolutely crucial, and there was a lot of tension back and forth about uh, what all of the things that were being discussed were, were basic. Uh, uh, ways that the church, you know, St. John the Twenty Third wanted to, us to be the signs of the times, and communism was rampant in the world at that time, uh, and uh, he made a, 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 a approach to the communists to try to influence them, uh, and uh, so there was all kinds of current because we, have a democratic country <laughs> like ours, was a, exactly. everything was a, a shared responsibility, and uh, so. Uh, there, there were those kinds of tensions. But in the council itself, every day, uh, there was uh, places where the bishops could go to maybe have a little cup of coffee and maybe a little tiny roll <laughs> <laughs> to get away from the... the to intensity. take in a break, no? right? in the middle take, of these uh, intellectual and theological the, battles, the, when the, I say that. And the, Yes, and that was right in the basilica itself, they had these little coffee shops just uh, off in the corner. And uh, <laughs> so I'd stand in amongst the the bishops one time, and one time I was standing there, and a German bishop, uh, they, they had a kind of a tassel on the back of their cassock, backed into me, and uh, the tassel got caught in my buttons. Oh. So, <laughs> <laughs> so he, he was leaning over backwards oh. as I tried to <laughs> release him from his capture. So, <laughs> Monsignor, uh, speaking about tensions and challenges, how... 61 years of priesthood with this kind of tension and challenges. Many, right? Right. You, you know, and it's, a, it's one of those things that you, you just have to remain flexible and realize that uh, God is working in our world today, just as he always has, and that we have to be willing to, uh, to accept uh, things as, as they come at us. And we know, for example, a good example is the pandemic. You know, I, in my in my whole life, I've never seen anything wow. like a, a problem like this. And yet God is present here, too, uh, that uh, we, we pray to him that the pandemic will end and uh, uh, how people have been drawn 
uh, closer to God sometimes by the pandemic. And, uh, so, but I, and so I've seen many changes in, uh, in, in my life as a, a priest. Uh, I never expected that, that my bishop would die in a plane crash in Rome itself at the end of the fourth session. Wow. He was on his way to Jerusalem with one of our priests. And we'll talk about that maybe a little bit later. Iowa Catholic Radio. Be not afraid. Monsignor Vincent this morning with us. The next Man Up West Power Lunch is Friday, September 10th at noon, St. Francis of Assisi Parish in West Des Moines. There will be a panel of newly ordained priests sharing their vocation story. Lunch will be provided by the West Des Moines Chick-fil-A on University. Learn more at iowacatholicradio.com under the events section. Mary's Meals provides hope in the form of one good meal to over one million of the world's poorest children every school day. Learn more about Mary's Meals at marysmealsusa.org. Mary's Meals, a simple solution to world hunger. marysmealsusa.org. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio's broadcast of Dowling Catholic Sports and Activities is provided by Kemen. Kemen strives to sustainably transform the quality of life every day for 80% of the world with their products and services. Kemen, using science to transform the world. Online at Kemen.com. Thank you, Golden Rule Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling, for sponsoring my show. John Lee and Eddie in the Morning on Iowa Catholic Radio. Golden Rule, servicing Des Moines for over 15 years. They obey the rules to live by, especially the Golden Rule. Online at goldenrulephc.com. Thank you, Big Red Q Quick Print, for underwriting the sports report. Family owned and operated since 1980, Big Red Q Quick Print is a full service print shop, ready to help you with all your printing needs with speed and accuracy. Big Red Q Des Moines.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by Northwest Bank. Commitment you can bank on. Northwest Bank is a community bank serving Iowa and Nebraska. N-W-B-A-N-K. Thank you, Northwest Bank, for supporting Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by the St. Vincent de Paul Golf Outing to fight food insecurity. Friday, September 17th, Copper Creek Golf Club in Pleasant Hill, 10 a.m. SVDPDSM.org. That's SVDPDSM.org. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by Farm Bureau agent Cindy Schulte, an authorized independent agent for Walmart Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Iowa, an independent licensee of the Blue Cross Blue Shield Association. Learn more at 515-226-2111 or cindyschulte.com. Welcome back to Iowa Catholic Radio. Be not afraid. Monsignor, the bishop died in the yes, you accident? know, at the uh, end of the session... Uh, I was really tired. I did not take the bishop to the airport. The Dominican priest, he went with the Dominican priest to the airport to uh, join Monsignor Sandek, who was a priest from our diocese, and they were going to go to Jerusalem, to the Holy Land, and the plane, through a series of events, uh, was not able to take off, and uh, uh, it blew up and didn't kill everybody, but it did kill Bishop Daly and Monsignor Sandek, and I was called out to identify the bodies of both of them. Wow. And so uh, it was a very uh, tragic experience, uh, you know. It, it, was, uh, it was kind of mixed, you know, uh, uh, because of the, of the fire. They, they, they didn't look terribly disfigured because of the fact that, you know, uh, it, it took all the hair off of the face and so on. But uh, the, um, uh, the, the, the bodies themselves were, uh, you know, in, in, they were recognizable. So I'll just leave it at that, if that's okay. <laughs> If may, if, may yeah. I, if may I ask you, Monsignor, one of the, the beauty memories that you have upon, I, I, I think, many, many good memories and beautiful memories in these 61 years of service to the Holy Catholic Church as a priest. Well, like so many of the Iowans, the visit of St. John Paul II <laughs> to Des Moines in 1979, was I, I was able to distribute communion. At, uh, pre- uh, to be president and distribute communion on that occasion. And there were like 350,000 uh, wow. uh, Iowan <laughs> people, people from all over the Midwest actually came to Living History Farms. And uh, it Such was a just blessing. a wonderful, wonderful occasion. And uh, the, uh, I was thinking about the fact we had to wait for a while. You know, whenever you're dealing with papal audiences, <laughs> you have to wait for the Pope to come. But they want you there early. Which they did, and the priests visited, just visited with one another all the time. So it was a very, very wonderful experience, and so many stories come from that part of my experience too. Well, Senor, moving into this coming Sunday Gospel, the Gospel of Mark, 
chapter 7, verses 31 to 37, describe beautifully. Again, Jesus left the district of Tyre and went by way of Sidon of the Sea of Galilee into the district of the Decapolis. And people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him off by himself away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ears and his spitting touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned and said to him, Epheta, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened. His speech impediment was removed, and he spoke plainly. He ordered them not to tell anyone, but the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished. And they said, He has done all things well. He makes the thief hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is a very interesting piece of the Gospel for this coming Sunday. So, how do you expect the Lord Jesus to trade you when you ask for the, His help? That's right. You know, uh, in the early church, they really looked at the opening the eyes of faith. You know, that that's part of uh, touching the ears and the mouth. It's At the part baptism. of the baptism, right? Right. right. And it's not, it's not uh, it's so fully carried out today. But, but uh, in the early church, they thought of the light of faith. You know, in other words, the man not only uh, couldn't speak and couldn't hear, but we as Christians, when we enter into the life of grace, then we're able to hear Jesus speaking and to be able to st explain to others his message that he brings to, we bring to the world. And that's where the church is today, that we're, we're really in that work of, of absolutely trying to uh, uh, live the life of faith and teach the life of faith. In fact, Jesus never turned anyone aside who approached him with sincerity and trust. And whatever Jesus did, he did well. Whatever Jesus did, he did well. He demonstrated both the beauty and goodness of God in his actions. Isn't that very remarkable? That uh, many is, handicapped uh, people, many illness people, and today means a sign of hope for us as and well. And there's so many beautiful pictures of Jesus in the scriptures. If you know, They're not visible, not <laughs> sight pictures, but uh, in our faith. You know, because of the fact we, we know that Jesus is present today as he was as present back then in, in our life, that, that we can turn, realize that uh, he touches us with uh, his finger, you know. With, uh, and also it's in a, in a beautiful memory about the sacrament of baptisms as well, that is the open doors for the kingdom of God and be part of the Jesus Christ Church as well, right. you know? It's a simple ceremony, but so important. And uh, just uh, it, it's life-changing. In fact, this coming Saturday, we have 15 new souls that will be arrived to the Catholic Church in Our Lady of the Americas. So it's a more job to do. Monsignor, any special message to send us? Uh, you know, I think the, the main thing is to remain calm and to realize we are children of God, that God is in our life. He sends the Holy Spirit, talks to us every day. We need to be listening. Absolutely. Could you please send us with your blessing? May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon Iowa Catholic Radio, on its sponsors, its listeners, its staff, all who are concerned with Iowa Catholic Radio. Be not afraid. Be not afraid. Jesus is on the way to encounter you. Be Not Afraid is underwritten by Associated Ophthalmologists. 